Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Professor Ankan. Today we're going to talk about nested if statements. We're going to talk about the big idea. We're going to look at the logic of nested if statements and we're going to see some examples. So the big idea here is that if you want to test more than one condition, you can have an if statement be nested inside of another if statement. So for example, let's say that we wanted to determine if a number was between zero and 10. The first thing we would need to do is we would need to verify that a number was bigger than zero. And then if that number was bigger than zero, we would have ask a follow-up question. Is that number less than 10? If both of those things are true, then we'll display on the screen the numbers between zero and 10. And then maybe we'll say, you know, goodbye. So let's see an example of that logic and the nested loop um, play out. So we might ask the user to enter in a number. So we'll say, see out, enter a number. And then we'll read in that number. And to keep it simple, we'll just use integers for this example. So the first thing that we'll do is we will test. We'll have our first if statement, our first test expression. We'll say, well, if the number is greater than zero, then we're going to do something. And if it's not, then we'll just go ahead and print out that goodbye. But if it is greater than zero, now this is where our nested if is gonna come into play. So then we'll put inside the block of the outer if statement, we'll say, well, if the number is less than 10. And if it is, then we'll do something. You know, we'll display on the screen, the number is between zero and 10. So let's go ahead and test that. So first thing we'll test is, is the number negative five, right? If we enter negative five, well, negative five is not greater than zero. So this entire outer if block is gonna get skipped and then we go and execute the see out statement. But now if we were to enter say eight, okay? Now we're gonna see that correctly that the number is between zero and 10 because when the number is eight, then this outer if, the test expression values are true because eight is greater than zero. And then we do the second test with the inner if, and eight is less than 10, so that's true. So then we display the appropriate message. And then that inner if is done, we return to the outer if. Well, there's nothing left to do in the outer if. So then the outer if is finished as well, and then we proceed to display the goodbye. Now, what happens if we do say 10? Okay, well, if we do 10, we're just gonna say goodbye. Why? Because for the outer if, 10 is greater than zero, that's true. But for the inner if, 10 is not less than 10. So this is false. And so this block right here gets skipped. We return to the outer if, the outer if is done, and then we go to the goodbye. So this has the effect of only displaying the numbers between zero and 10 if both of these conditions are true. So you have to have the condition that the number is greater than zero and the number is less than 10. So both of those have to be true in order for this to execute here. But we're not done yet. We can also nest if else statements. So let's say we wanted to tell the user if their number was zero or less, or if their number was 10 or greater, in addition to if their number is between zero and 10. Well, then we are gonna use if else's to do that. So let's rewrite this. So the first thing we'll do is we'll check to see if the number is greater than zero. And if it is, we'll do something. But if it's not, then we'll do something else. And what's that something else? Well, if their number is not greater than zero, then it has to be zero or less. So we'll display that the number is zero or less. So we'll say Z, Z out, the number is zero or less. But if the number is greater than zero, then we have to ask a follow-up question. We'll ask, well, is the number less than 10, similar to what we did before. And if that number is less than 10, we'll do something. Otherwise, we'll do something else. So what's that something else? We'll tell them that the number is 10 or greater. So see out the number is 10 or greater. Okay, now if the number is less than 10, well then we have the same situation that we had in the previous example where the number was both greater than zero and less than 10. So we can tell them that the number is between zero and 10. Okay, so now let's quickly take a look at the logic for this in a flowchart, right? So if the number is greater than zero, if that's true, then we're gonna ask if the number is less than 10. So if both of those are true, then we're gonna display that the number is between zero and 10, and then we'll display our goodbye. Now, if the number is zero or less, then it's false to say that the number is greater than zero, so then we'll just 
display to the screen that the number is zero or less, then we'll print our goodbye. But now if the number is greater than zero and the number is not less than 10, then we'll display that the number is 10 or greater, and then we display goodbye. So let's go ahead and test each of those scenarios. So let's test negative one. We see that we get the correct output. Let's test six. We see that we get the correct output. And then let's test, I don't know, 22. And we see that we get the correct output. Okay, so let's say if we wanted to do something even more sophisticated. Let's say that we wanted to determine if a number was less than zero, uh, or if the number was from zero through 10, or if the number was more than 10 up through 20, or if the number is more than 20 up through 30, or if the number is more than 30. Well, we can go ahead and do a whole bunch of nesting. So let's first take a look at a flowchart that's going to show us what our uh, logic is going to look like. First thing we're going to do is we're going to test to see if the number is less than zero. If it is, we'll display the number is less than zero. If it's not, then we will check to see if the number is less than or equal to 10. If it is, then we can tell the user that the number is from zero through 10, and then we'll say our goodbye. If it's not, then we'll check to see if the number is less than or equal to 20. If it is, we'll display the number is more than 10 and up through 20, and then we'll say goodbye. If it's not, we'll check to see if the number is less than or equal to 30. If it is, we'll say display the number is more than 20 and up to 30, then we'll say goodbye. If it's not, then we'll display the number is more than 30 and we'll display our goodbye. So let's take a look at how we would code that. So we'll just follow the logic from our flow chart. First thing we did is we checked to see if the number is less than zero. If it is, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. And the thing we're going to do is we're going to tell the user that the number is less than zero. Otherwise, we're going to have our first nested if else. And we're testing to see if the number is less than or equal to 10. If it is, we'll do something. Otherwise, we'll do something else. And what we'll do is we'll tell them that their number is from zero through 10. So number is from zero through 10. 10, and if it's not, then we're gonna do our next nested if else. And we're gonna check to see if the number is less than or equal to 20. If it is, we're gonna do something. If it's not, we're gonna do something else. And the thing we're gonna do if it is, is we're gonna tell the user that the number is more than 10 and up through 20. Okay. But if it's not, then we're gonna test against 30. So if number is less than or equal to 30, then you guessed it, we're gonna do something. And if it's not, then we're going to do something else. If it is, we're going to tell the user that the number is more than 20 and up through 30. And if it's not, we're going to tell the user that their number is greater or is more than 30. So let's test each potential range of numbers. So let's say we got negative five. Does that give us the correct output? It does. Now let us try 11. Does that give us the correct output? It does. Now what about, say, 22 does that give us the correct output it does now what about um, 99 does that give us the correct output and it does now let's just pick one more example and then trace through the logic of it and see why it works okay so let's say that i put in 16 does that give me the right output it does now why well let's let's trace through our code so when we prompt the user to enter the number, the user, me in this case, entered 16 in return. So is 16 less than zero? No, that's false. So we kick down to the else block, right? Start executing that. First thing inside that else block is if the number is less than or equal to 10. Well, 16 less than or equal to 10? No, that's false. So then we kick down to its attached else. And so then we start executing its block. And the first thing in its block is the test if the number is less than or equal to 20. Well, the number is 16. Is 16 less than or equal to 20? true so we execute its attached block and we display the number is more than 10 and up through 20 and then its attached else gets skipped and then we continue with the outer else block and there's nothing else so we're done there so then we continue with the outermost else block and there's nothing more to do so we're done there and then we finally finish up by displaying uh, see out goodbye now one last thing i want to show you here is something about coding style. And what you have here is a decent coding style, right? This is a good way to write your code. You can see that the if else's are all lined up, right? The matching if and else's are lined up to each other. It's easy to see what belongs to what, and this makes it easier to read your code and also to debug. So what you don't wanna do, and this is something that I see new CS students do all the time, is write their code like this. Okay, where everything is kind of arranged at the same 
margin so that you can't really tell at a glance easily what goes with what. This is a terrible coding style. It makes it harder for you to see, you know, which else goes with which if, what's nested in what. And so when you're trying to debug or, or trace through your code, suddenly it becomes a lot more difficult to see what's happening. So don't do this. This is terrible coding style. So the correct way to do it is to consistently indent your code and make sure that it lines up well and that the ifs are easily uh, viewable with their else's okay so now you know the basics of why you would use nested ifs the logic behind them and you've seen some examples of them being used thanks for watching and we'll see you next time